Gentlemen, gentlemen, and Gene, of course. Gene, you suck. Welcome to the championship bracket for the 2022 Truman Invitational College Football Fantasy League. Guys, what a great year. A lot of teams uh, really did a good job not giving up during the entire season. So I know my cousin, even though he started out, what, golly, 0-12 or 0-15, battled back to get six, you know, seven or eight wins, never never quit putting in his lineup. Same thing for uh, Josh uh, Barry and for a couple of guys who had some tough luck this year. Really appreciate you guys battling until the end and keeping the integrity of the league going. I'm um, just going to go over the uh, championship bracket. Um, this year we have one, Four new teams in the playoffs. Of course, Fighting Harbaugh is a division winner. This is their first year in the league. He comes as number one seed. That's pretty impressive. Um, but then we have East Carolina Hambone, who was it played last year, did not make the playoffs. Jamie, uh, NIL cocky recruit, also known as Crybaby. He made the playoffs this year. And, and then Justin, my gosh, what can we say about Justin? Week three, Senza sends me the text that I shared with you because I – that uh, he just didn't think this was for him, and he was going to work as hard as he could this year, but he wasn't going to play next year. But he battled, figured some things out, and made it as an AC in the playoffs. So great job, Justin. And he's already committed that now he has to play next year. So glad to have uh, Justin be back for next season. So we have one, two, three, four new teams. Chris Martin, living in Greenville, North Carolina, home of the East Carolina Pirates, comes in an East Carolina hand bone. He makes the playoffs as a division winner in his second year. So that's that's great to have new teams get in this year. So um, the first team out was Todd with Beer Belly Blues. Same record as Justin, 17-13, but was 163 points short in total points. So um, Todd just missed out, and that's only about four or five points per game if you do the math. So um, anyway, just want to touch on, on, on these games, these matchups this week for the first round. Kind of highlight some of the th some of the interesting note things I noticed about each team. There's a couple things on here. The total points in green for each team scored is on just right of the brackets. Any player circled was picked up off waivers. So you'll see um, these are the impact players. If you look at, at their rosters of who really impacted the season, so a lot of teams had made made moves on the waiver wire that really impacted them. The star by each player, Hyatt was a high, is a highest scoring wide receiver. B. John Robinson, the highest scoring running back, and Bo Nix, the highest scoring quarterback. Little nugget about Bo Nix. You can see he picked up off waivers by, by Jamie, an out cocky recruit, was cut by Swag Juice. Alan Pomato cut him, I think, in week three or four. So just imagine if you may even think that those an out cocky recruit and Swag Juice may have switched spots possibly um, if it wasn't, wasn't for that big change for uh, Jamie. Because Jamie, as you see, the lowest scoring team at 53-69 from the season. But over the last five weeks, he's been one of the better scoring teams. So a slow start, made some big acquisitions, and jumped him up and got him some W. So great job, Jamie. And uh, Jamie's out, um, laid up with the back surgery. So let's have our thoughts with him. And he'll be able to watch his team move in the playoffs going forward. So talk a little bit about each team. Now I'm going to give you the line, or basically if you took take the total amount of points Average amount of points scored by the rosters that are currently in fan tracks. What the line says and what, who should be favored in his favor going into this matchup this weekend. Which has already started. Playoff committee has some guy, I forgot his name, has already scored 20 points against me from Tulsa. So uh, anyway, the week has started as some of those uh, Conference USA games have already been played. At least one or two. Anyway, let's go to our first matchup. Seed one, the Fighting Hardballs and Division Champion. Misspelled. Says Harbogs. Let's fix that. Fighting Harbaugh is 22 and 8 against our chicken little friend Justin. Well, one thing about the Fighting Harbaugh is they're going to lean heavily on Justin Hyatt. Now, Tennessee's playing Missouri this week, of course, you guys know is my team. And Missouri's defense is pretty good, but I don't know if we can hold down Justin Hyatt. I think he's still going to get his. You got Mordecai for M uh, SMU, and then, of course, Michigan has been one of his best players as a team defense. That's going to lead the uh, Fighting Harbaugh this week. Coot season, best players, DTR from UCLA, Dorian Thompson-Robinson, um, Abba Kanana, I think I pronounced that right, uh, running back for Pitt, and just to keep an eye on him, he did have a, he is banged up a little bit, make sure he plays. And you got Trey, uh, Trey Palmer from Nebraska and Tank Bigsby from Auburn. Obviously this week, guys, a lot of this, as we've, we've all learned, goes into who you're playing, what's the matchup, and that's what we're going to be looking at this week. The matchups are going to dictate who advances, and it's going to be a, uh, should be pretty exciting. 
Next matchup is almost nap time against G Daddy 2. Gene, 20 and 10, both teams 20 and 10. Uh, Rusty scored a few more points. He's going to rely heavily on Deuce Vaughn, Jay Kaner from Fresno State, Deuce Vaughn from K State, and running back. And then Riley Leonard, a quarterback from Duke, as you see, picked up off waivers. So, you know, a lot of teams really put themselves in a better position with that waiver process. Gene has Michael Penix at uh, Washington, Clayton Toon from Houston, and of course, I think probably his best player is Josh Downs out of uh, UNC from North Carolina. Um, really has a great season with um, Drake May tossing the spinning the pigskin down down in Chapel Hill. So you go to down the next matchup. We got uh, Jason Ricker, playoff committee, twenty one eight and one. I think that tie. Look back. I think that was against Swag Juice. Probably if Allen had Bo Nix, he wouldn't have tied. Anyway, that's a uh, playoff committee. Uh, Jane Daniels uh, out of LSU. Bijan Robinson, Xavier Hutchinson from Iowa State. Bijan Robinson, of course, from Texas, down horns. Um, that's been his three best player, Jay Daniels. I think we've all been watching him play at LSU. What exceptional year he's having. When he transferred, he visited Missouri. It was between Mizzou and LSU. And he chose the other Tigers. And, you know, probably a better move for him career-wise, but we sure could have used him. We have no quarterback in Mizzou this year. So, um, Jay Daniels, exciting player to watch. My, leading my team at Head. Hendon Hooker from Tennessee, Nathan Dell from Houston, and then Chucky Jones out of Purdue, a guy I got in week two, I think, off the waivers, and uh, he's been a great player for me this year. East Carolina Hambone coming at 20 and 10. His best player, his best player is Ayers out of East Carolina, their quarterback, Marvin Harrison Jr. out of Ohio State, wide receiver, Max Dugan, also quarterback from TCU, who led that squad. And then, of course, Jamie's team in Okaki. His two of his best players picked up off waivers. And we already talked about Bo Nix. And the Judkins from Ole Miss has just been tearing it up since, since about the first of, uh, middle of October. So great job by uh, Jamie recognizing that and getting him on his team. Then, of course, Zay Flowers always solid at Boston College. So that's kind of what we're looking at as we go into the uh, playoffs. As I said, I kind of went back and, sh and, and took a, did a snapshot of the last 30 days to kind of get an idea of where, what, the spread should be on these games. Coming up in, in a fight Harbaugh's against Coots season, obviously you would figure the fighting Harbaugh should be favored, and they actually are. So over the past over the past 30 days, the fighting Harbaugh's are averaging 234 points a game based on the guys going to the lineup now, while Justice's team is averaging 192. So you're going to come in here with minus 42. The Harbaugh's are finished are favored by 42 points coming into this to this uh, first round. So you just never know. As we all know, you get a guy who goes out in the first quarter. Hyatt goes out with a sprained ankle in the first quarter. That loses 30 points for for the Harbaugh's, and that can close the gap pretty quickly. Not saying that would happen, but you know, you guys understand my thought process there. Come down almost snap time versus G Daddy. Interesting, interesting thing here. Even though almost nap time has scored more points. Looking over the past 30-day snapshot, G Daddy's team has, has been more productive. G Daddy and Gene are actually favored by 29 points coming into this matchup uh, based on average score over the last 30 days. Playoff committee and Mizzou Gunner. I've been the highest scoring team. How's that going to translate going today? Well, this this say it's going to be a close one. Ricker's team has been averaging 217. Um, 217.49 points over the last three days. My team's been averaging 227, so I'm favored by nine based on those numbers. Hard to believe looking at the, that threesome right there, especially Robinson and Daniels. Uh, Texas, I know, think they're going to have a high-scoring game. LSU's got Arkansas. <clears throat> I imagine that's going to be a high-scoring game, so it may be tough for me to keep up. Um, guess i got to hope for Tennessee to beat Mizzou really bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's a strange, strange, this game would make you have strange bedfellows. Um, and then finally, our last game, East Carolina Hambone versus NIL Cocky. Um, East Carolina is a division winner. And NIL Cocky, the lowest scoring team. But if you look at their players, two of the hottest guys in the country, this you know, NIL Cocky has been one of the best scoring teams the last three or four weeks, and it shows up in these numbers here. As your seventh seed, is favored by 25. So, there's a snapshot of what we're looking at going to the playoffs in the championship bracket this year, fellas. 
Again, appreciate everybody playing. If you have any questions, uh, send me a text or call me, either one. Um, make sure you got your lineups in. Double check, make sure nobody's been injured. Um, if you got a guy with a red flag, as you guys know, the best place to go is to check, uh, check the local uh, newspaper, uh, local information from the coaches shows, search it on YouTube, see what you can find out. But that's going to be our playoff bracket for the first round, boys. Good luck to everybody.